Hey guys, this will be a quick overview on how to play X-Wing for Tabletop Simulator. So first, you load up the game, and you can select a single player if you're just messing around with things or trying to build something. Or you can go to multiplayer, I'll click multiplayer. You can host your own server, or you can check who's playing. So I'm going to hit the server browser. Now this is sorted by hiding the locked games and the full games. So if you unselect these, I'm going to show you all the games available. And you can sort it by game name. Scroll down and look for X-Wing. And as you can see, there's three X-Wing games being played right now. And I could join one of those by double clicking on that. But I'm going to host my own server for this tutorial. So I will exit out of here. I will host server. Now I'm going to make it a two-player, and I'm going to put a password on there. Now you don't have to have a password if you want it to be open and you want anybody to join, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just put in a password. You can rename your server whatever you'd like, and you can create. Here you get to select what game you'd like to play. We're going to come here to the workshop, and we're going to load the X-Wing table with automated movement. And wait for it to load here. So as you can see on the right, there's a little note, give you information about what's going on or whatever. You can click on that, highlight it, delete it. You can also click on the notebook up here at the top and that'll give you information on updates. It'll give you information on movement, rules, etc. And with Tabletop Simulator, you can change the angle of what you're looking at. You can zoom in and out, move all around. So let's look at how some of these things work here. All of these things that you see here in the middle are token bags or dice bags. And so if I needed an evade, I can just pull one out of there. If I needed a stress, same thing, ion token. If I needed three red dice, I can pull one out and then pull out two more, and there will be my three red dice, and same thing with the defense. Okay, And dice are rolled by one of two ways. You can highlight the ones you're rolling, you can shake them all around if you want, and just roll them. That tends to be a little messy, so what most people will do is they will highlight the dice they're going to roll, and you can hit R multiple times, and it'll just toss them up in the air. When you're ready, let go of R, drop your dice, and you'll be like, okay, I have a focus token, I'm going to spend the focus token, and I'm going to convert this into a hit. And you can just select the face and make it a hit. So two hits, one blank. Movement templates are done the same way. They're all here off to the side. If I needed a five straight, I can grab it, pull it out, Main range ruler. And when you're done with them, you can simply highlight them and delete them. You can hover over it and delete them individually. So let's say let's, we're getting ready for a game. So we need to load our squad. To load a squad, you come up here to host. You go to your chest, saved objects. And this is assuming that you uh, looked at the tutorial, you built a squad, you're ready to go. So I have a folder here that says squads. You can save as many as you want, I'm guessing. Come here, and let's say we're going to load a dash card. So I'm going to drag that out into the play area. Let that load. Highlight them. Put them on my side. And then I'm going to load their dials. I have X-Wing auto dials here. I'm going to load the E-Wing dial. And the YT-2400. And then let's escape out of that. So I have the dials. I'm going to put these dials in my hidden zone back here. And in this zone, the other players cannot see what I'm doing. As you can see, I cannot see into this blue zone. They cannot see into this white zone. Next, I will save the dials for my ships. I will place the ship kind of in the center. It needs a range one. Same thing with Cornhorn. And then I will store the dials. Now, you can store dials by typing store dial. 
and you'll get a little marker here that comes up and it says 17 dials saved for Cornhorn. And then you can remove that little marker by hitting the remove button and Cornhorn is ready to go. Or if you're you know comfortable, you can just place it in the middle, eyeball it, and use the shortcut SD. Click off of that menu, and I'll see 17 dials saved for Bash Rendar. And we'll put dash out here. Now, next we need uh, we need asteroids. Asteroids and debris are here on the side. You can pull out a debris, an asteroid, a core set asteroid. And then you can change the shape to whichever one you needed. So you hover over the item and you can see it says one slash six. So I can hit the numbers one through six and it will change into all the different asteroid shapes that are available. Same thing with debris. So let's say those are my three asteroids that I select. I'm gonna put them off here to the side. And then we need to have the range rulers. So there's a button here on the side that says toggle rulers. So if you toggle rulers, you have a little setup grid that pops up. And let's say we will place asteroids in the area. And then we're going to lock them in place using the L key so that they don't accidentally get moved or picked up. Next, I will place my ships. Well, actually, technically, Dash will place first before Corrin, and then Corrin will be placed. Now we're ready to play. And I will hit the toggle so that the guides go away. To make moves, you flip over the move you would like in the hidden zone, and then pick it up and place it next to your ship. Same thing with dash here. As you can see, two buttons pop up. These are the automated buttons for the movement. And you can delete it. And if you delete, it goes back to where it originally was so that you can select a different move. And flip that back over, put it back out there. Okay, let's say it's Dash's turn to move. You can flip the dial with the flip button. You can perform the move with the move button and then hit the delete button and it will go back here to your dial area ready for the next round. And let's do the same thing for Corrin here. Flip, move, delete. Oh, one thing I forgot, shields. So we'll come here to the shield bag, grab a shield out of there. Everything in here can be copy and pasted. So uh, I will copy and paste some shields for my guys. You can have them laid out that way. You can group them together. Some people like to do it that way. And that way you hover over it, three shields, five shields. So let's say I was going to do a barrel roll with one of these guys. I can right click on the ship. And this is the command prompt right here where it says pending. And I will type in the barrel roll command, which is going to be XR would be barrel roll right. And then I click off of the menu and there he goes. He does a barrel roll to the right. Let's say he was going to do a boost straight. I can right click on him, highlight this, and I can do a boost straight would be an S1. And we'll click off of that. And there you go. See, that's a straight one. Um, another cool feature is the automated range ruler. You right click on a ship and you hit R. And you get a little range ruler and arc guide. There's a little button here for you to remove it when you're done. Same thing with the large ships. Right click on the large ship, type in R in the command prompt, click off of it, and there you go. Get a little range ruler for them. Other cool features on Tabletop Simulator are the bombs. Now bombs are not placed automatically, but it's not too hard to do. Grab a one straight template. Let's get a good view here. Pick up the one straight template. You can lower it by hitting the right click as you're holding the left click. Slide it into place. Get the bomb and put that right there. Now, let's say he is using one of the range one bombs, like a proton bomb. Oh, see it says four out of eight. 
the bombs are just like the asteroids. You can change the bombs into the type that you like or you need. And so let's put this proton bomb here. And then Dash is going to move along. I know Dash doesn't drop bombs, just as an example. So uh, when the bomb is ready to explode, you right click on the bomb. In the command prompt down here underneath the bomb name, you hit R and it'll show you a range one marker of who got blasted by that bomb. And then you click remove and it goes away. So that's basically how Tabletop Simulator uh, allows you to play X-Wing. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Oh, I'm sorry, target locks. Target locks are done differently. So let's say Corrin is fighting against Dash. In real life, you would need two target locks. Well, on the tabletop simulator, you only need one. Each side has a target lock bag, as you can see. Blue player has a blue one. Over on this side, green player has a green bag. Red player has a red bag. And white player has a white target lock bag. So what you're going to do is I pull out a target lock drop it on your ship and it'll say white TL named for corn horn and as you can see when I hover over it it'll say corn horn then I will place it on my target I do not need to keep one on my ship because I can hover over the target lock and know that corn horn is locking on to dash rendar um, so I think that's the last bit of info that you need to know on how to play X-Wing on Tabletop Simulator Hope to see you guys around.